uh, the Diamond K Show on Fire-TV.com, Radio on Fire. Now, I was hoping, I was hoping that they did not have Donald Trump at the NABJ. They invited Donald Trump to this conference in 2020. He declined to come. He did not think that it was important. He did not think that it was uh, something worth doing. So he didn't do it. And for some reason, black people, we have, many of us, have this desire to be accepted. We want people to like us. So we tolerate disrespect. It happens. I don't like to see it happen, but it happens. That's why black people treat black politicians worse than anybody. That's why black people are the worst patrons in black businesses. And this is just more of the same. So today, Donald Trump came to Chicago. And uh, this is a place that he's called embarrassing. A city that he likened to a war zone. Right. And like many cities, it's got problems. There's no, I don't think there's any city in America that doesn't have a problem. Something that could be fixed. So Donald Trump is in a room full of, of black journalists and uh, he celebrated, he celebrated the elimination of affirmative action in this room full of black journalists, so-called smart people. My sister, uh, my, my sister, was one of the people in the room. And I told her, I I didn't agree with Trump going. She said she wanted to hear what he had to say, but you knew what he was going to say. You already knew what he was going to say. But journalists, so-called smart people, uh, the good folks over at the NABJ thought that it was a good idea because they want to be accepted uh, by mainstream media. And so they thought that it was a good idea to invite the criminal, convict, 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 convicted of numerous, numerous uh, uh, felonies. To be clear, we're talking about the former president, Donald Trump. So they they invited him. After he turned him down in 2020, 2020, now yes, Clinton's Clinton's gone and, and Bush is gone, Obama, all of that, wonderful. But you already invited him, he turned you down in 2020. Joe Biden interviewed. He did it, uh, you know, remotely. This is during COVID. Kamala Harris was invited. However, she did not attend. She had uh, to do the uh, funeral for Sheila Jackson Lee in Texas. She asked if she could do it remotely. They told her no. No, of course not. But they platformed Donald Trump. Now, As I said, no surprise what he said. No uh, new things did he bring up. And and evidently his hearing aid wasn't working that good uh, because he tried to act like he couldn't hear things. Completely came on stage hostile, disrespectful, saying that uh, they couldn't get their equipment to work right. They were starting late. Their their equipment was faulty. He was trying to to say, he's trying to say, you want colored people time? You want black people time? That's what he's trying to say. And these journalists were not prepared to check him. So according to reports, they started late because the Trump team did not want them fact checking in real time. And he kept complaining that he couldn't hear. But the stream was fine. The mics were fine. Everybody could, everybody that was watching could hear just fine. Now, they were spread apart, spread apart a little bit. 
and, and so he kept saying that the microphones, but that's not the micro a microphone issue. That's a, a monitor. The speakers in the front. We have monitors here in the studio. Uh, so so maybe he's saying that the monitors could be turned up. So he could have said that if that's what he was thinking. Uh, but he was trying to discredit the national black journalists, you know, the, the conference. He was trying to, the, the National Association of Black Journalists, he was trying to discredit them. Now, I don't have any issue with the presidential campaign running and doing the things that they do. I I have a a a very profound issue with the decision makers distracting from what is always a great event. They wanted to sneak and hide and and, and keep it a secret that Trump was going to be there and announcing it the day before because they knew it was wrong. They knew it was going to get a reaction from people that was negative. Now, I almost went this year. So glad that I didn't go. So glad. The convention, the organization was used by Trump and his MAGA cronies. Used. He wasn't there to try to uh, make any converts of the black journalists in the room. That's not why he attended. He didn't think that he was going to get any more black votes. He went there to mock the journalist. He went there to tell his MAGA folks, hey, 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 watch this. I'm going to go down here with these black people. Watch this. So they think this was funny, right? He was there to embarrass the black journalists that were there. And many black people on you know in, in whole that's what he was there to do he was there to make a mockery make a mockery he didn't answer questions he didn't do any of the things that he was supposed to do that you would think that he would do it, it's like uh, lucy linus with the football we always want this acceptance for what he had already disrespected the event previously And it's, oh, no, they they always think he's going to make this pivot. They always think he's going to make some kind of change. He's going to be who he is. That's what he that's what he is. He's a liar. He's a liar. Oh, he told many lies. But the NABJ leaders decided to platform a person who has insulted the convention's host city, who's insulted its residents. In previous proclamations, Trump said, threatened, suggested use of the military to address Chicago's crime and insinuated that it could be eradicated in a day. Trump's downplayed the racism, the redlining, the decades of disinvestment that create the city's cycle of violence and poverty. Yeah. So they platformed this guy. Was was it their intention that they were going to hear Donald Trump outline some plans for black families? Maybe he's going to try to strengthen black families. Did, Did they think that they were going to hear his plans for education in black communities or job opportunities in uh, Chicago's poorest zip codes. Is that what these so-called smart people at the NABJ, is that what they thought they were going to get from Donald Trump? Because if that's what you thought you were going to get, surprise, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. Now, as a journalist, as a media personality, I applaud difficult conversations. I understand that difficult conversations are necessary. Necessary. I often hear folks with their both sides arguments, the whataboutisms. 
because that's all he does is lie and what about isms. You ask a question, why did you do this? What about such and such? They did that. Why did you do this? What about this? Nobody happened in it. You know, that whole thing. And, you know, the National Association of Black Journalists as an organization for the remainder of this campaign cycle um, will be leveraged as as a very thin example of outreach there on social media, you can see the many clips of Trump and, you know, his uh, just foolishness. This last minute, huge scheduling change with no opportunity for input. They had Harris Faulkner on the stage uh, a, a Trump, you know, flunky from Fox News. Just dismissive, uh, poor excuse. Uh, it just an unpopular decision. You saw on social media, if you were checking yesterday, the backlash that came when this was announced. The backlash because it should have never happened. Should have never happened. My sister almost got me, almost got me to start membership with the NABJ. Almost, like I was almost there. But no. Instead, I saved my money and and did something else with it. I hope going forward, the good folks over at the NABJ do a better job of reading the room, understanding what you claim the convention is all about. Instead of platforming a completely unhinged 78-year-old, twice impeached, twice impeached, criminal, convict and allow him to have a meltdown at your convention. Trump insulted the moderators, repeatedly lied, and melted down over the course of this interview. It's one of the worst interviews I've ever seen him participate in. And it was cut short by his campaign. That's how much of a train wreck it was. They said that he was going to do an hour. He didn't do an hour. They did like 40, 45 minutes. It was, uh, it was full of lies. Full of lies. I, I don't even know where to begin. Aside from the fact that he touched the stage with disrespect. Touch the stage. Hostile claims, of course, and you've heard him say this before, claims that he's the best president for black people since Abraham Lincoln and suggested that Kamala Harris used her race to help get elected. That's what he claims. Claims that she used her race to help get elected. Isn't that, isn't that classy? Came out swinging. He came out swinging. Very explosive interview before a largely black audience. He repeatedly went after the black women journalists and suggested that uh, his uh, supporters, of course, who were convicted in connection with the January 6th attack on the Capitol, uh, of course, were, you know, were innocent. He defended them. Uh, that's nothing new. Claimed to be the best president since Abraham Lincoln. Refused to answer if his running mate, J.D. Vance, would be ready on day one. He claimed, and, and so, and I said it was 40, 45 minutes. It's more like 34 minutes. But like I said, it was cut, cut short, apparently, um, at the instruction of Trump's campaign. And from reports, audience members were left stunned. Left stunned. 
It was a very unusual interview. Very unusual interview. He avoided answering questions that were important to the group of people that he was sitting in front of. But the so-called smart people that are in charge of the uh, conference thought this was a good idea. His motive, I suppose, was to explain his agenda. I don't even know why he went, honestly. It was not a good look. It was not a good look. And uh, I, I think that it would have probably been better suited for one person to conduct the interview. The ladies talked over each other, trying to get their questions in. And he didn't want to answer any questions, really. Within moments of taking the stage, the former president began arguing with ABC News senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott. Now, she came with good questions, and maybe she practiced, practiced them in the mirror the night before. She tried to do follow-up. But you have to handle folks like, like him in a certain kind of way. And uh, Harris Faulkner from Fox News, she was on stage to run interference, which she did. Um, the three black journalists, ironically, are in a demographic that Donald Trump has frequently attacked. I don't think he likes women, and I know he doesn't like black women. He said, when he first sat down, after she asked, asked the first question, first of all, I don't think I've ever uh, been asked a question uh, in such a horrible manner. A first question. You didn't even say hello. How are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. Yeah. His ego, his little feelings were hurt, and, and they said hi when he first got there. Said it's a nasty question. That, that's what he said to Hillary Clinton. You're just a nasty woman. Anytime some woman asked him something that's difficult, his little ego gets hurt. His little ego gets hurt. He verbally abused journalists back in 2018. The NABJ president, Sarah Glover, slammed Trump for his treatment, his comments towards April Ryan, Abby Phillip, Yamish uh, Alcindor. But they had him here at their conference trying to be accepted. Interesting. Claims, as you've heard many times, of, of being the best president for black folks since Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Said that the panel organization could not get their equipment to work. Trying to minimize black people. There was a bigger message, that, an, an undercurrent that he was trying to display for his MAGA minions who had, you know, was checking for him. Checking for him. Trump also wasted uh, little time calling into question the racial background of the vice president. Said that she's always of Indian heritage. And she was only promoting the Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of, number of years ago when she turned black, he said. And now she wants to be known as black. So I didn't know, is she Indian or is she black? Trump said. Asked to respond to Republicans. Uh, and this wasn't a question about the DEI hire. He asked uh, the ABC uh, correspondent, what was DEI? What was her definition of it? And she said, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And he said, define that. Like He didn't even know what those words meant. And his, his hearing aid, you know, his, his hearing is really going up because 
everybody could hear just fine except for him. I mean, he is 78. My father's 75. He can hear better than Trump. So it it, it was uh it was very disgraceful. He insulted those women and they couldn't fight back, really. He bullied them. He bullied them. And he's a nasty, disgusting individual. Disgusting. Doubled down on his stance. The the black jobs comment, which is just ridiculous. He has uh, a recent line of attack, him and his allies, um, talking about Kamala Harris as the border czar. Like she's solely responsible for the issue at the border. Harris, uh, Kamala Harris, in 21, 2021, she was given uh, a, a diplomatic mandate to help uh, mitigate the root causes of migration to the U.S. from countries in Central America. When asked if J.D. Vance would be ready on day one, you know, fo- following a very tough week for the uh, very weird presidential pick, Trump did not even answer that question directly. He didn't even answer that. He said that I've always had great respect for him and for the other candidates, too. Historically, the vice president, in terms of the election, does not have any impact, Trump said. That is just completely untrue. Anybody remember Sarah Palin? The vice presidential pick for Senator McCain? If McCain had picked a better vice president, that would have been a tougher, a, a tougher fight against Barack Obama. Him picking the terrible Alaska governor, Sarah Palin, that <laughs> affected things. Understand this. People want to have it both ways. The vice president is an important pick. Let's understand this. Joe Biden just stepped down from running. His vice president was in position to take over. If something happens to Joe Biden, God forbid, over the weekend, Kamala Harris is going to be the president. The vice, the, the vice presidential pick is critically important. It's the next person to the president. But this idiot Trump says that it doesn't have any impact. The reason why Kamala Harris is not going to pick somebody like Wes Moore or Gretchen Whitmer is because the vice presidential pick is critical. You pick the wrong person, it can lose everything for you. It's that important. It's that important. Just tune in, Shaman Dami K, of course, in here, the Dami K show. And you can support what we do if you're watching this. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube. Uh, however, you're listening to us, you can support uh, the Dami K show and on fire TV via paypal.me slash radio on fire. Of course, on Cash App, you can send your donations, dollar sign, the Diamond K show. You can become a member today, get exclusive content, additional content on fire-tv.com slash join and contact me of course dj dominic at gmail.com so they tried to do this like a, a fireside chat we're talking about uh the hostile donald trump taking the stage at the black journalists uh conference the nabj so this was billed as a fireside chat and uh, this was attended by uh, more than uh, 1,100 folks, waited more than an hour before the event got underway. It took place at the Hilton Chicago. Some listen intently with their phones held up to photograph those heated exchanges. Some laughed, some groaned, 
at Trump's ignorant and ridiculous comments about claiming not to know early on that Harris was black. So they're trying this thing now, Trump supporters, to, to say that Kamala Harris is not black. When you look at her, folks say black. That's what they say. You just saw her walking down the street. That's what you would think. You would think she was a, a light-skinned black lady. But um, I don't know. There was an interesting comment about Trump's age. That if Trump was reelected by the time his term ended, he'd be older than Joe Biden is now. Then, of course, he had all these excuses. But to say that Donald Trump is weird is an understatement. The racism, the sexism, that's not weird. That is terrible. That is awful. That is awful. It's disgusting. Trump's appearance at this conference set off controversy even before he took the stage. Even before he took the stage. It was a mistake. Their conference has been minimized and it's going to be ridiculed. Uh, They're going to have Kamala Harris, according to reports, uh, either in person or virtual sometime in September. They're able to work that out. But a lot of black journalists yesterday condemned um, the former president even getting an invitation I, I'm very surprised that they gave him a platform. Now, others defended the decision, saying there was an opportunity and the duty for journalists to interview a presidential candidate regardless of how they felt about him. And regardless of how he treats you and your platform, you want to be accepted that much. I think it is the single dumbest and worst decision in the history of the NABJ. Whoever made this call is an idiot. And I would say it to their face. So it was consistent with who Trump is. Trump is going to go places that are not necessarily his comfort zones. He may understand the value of having these conversations, but he's not going to make the most of the opportunity. He's not going to change. He's not going to pivot. He's not going to become more presidential or more professional or even more human-like. No, he's not going to do it. This is who he is. Let me know your thoughts, of course, in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at The Diamond K Show. Uh, Let's do this. Take a quick break, and we're going to come back with more of the show after this. Baltimore, 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 Baltimore. August the 3rd, have you heard? The entire city is buzzing about the citywide all-white affair. That's right, and it's going down at the hall located inside Merlin Live. Baltimore, this party is going to be late. We come up from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. You can eat, drink, dance, or gamble. We're going to shut the city down. This is one of the biggest and luxurious venues that you will ever want to party in. And it's not just going to be a movie. It's going to be live at Merlin Live. Tickets right now are $60 in advance and more at the door. Tables, seating 10 people at $600. Not only that, we also got a VIP ticket. The VIP ticket is $160, and that comes with special seating, as well as free food, and two hours of top shelf open bar. Ticket locations, Eventbrite. Or you can visit MK Music Warehouse located in the Sky Security Square Mall, right across from Cinnabon. 
or you can go to Silver Star Restaurant located at 801 Bonaparte Park Avenue, or you can call me, the legendary DJ Terry T, 443-953-1966 to get your tickets. And if you need a ride there and back, we have a party bus. That's right. Baltimore, if you need to ride, call me right now, and I'm going to set you up with the party bus. A portion of the proceeds will go back into the community to help serve the underserved community. That's right. We're talking about the homeless people and underprivileged kids and more. You got to be there. Man, Dominic K in here, of course. The Dominic K Show. Uh, definitely hit that subscribe button. Support what we do here. You can do that free. Just hit that subscribe button on YouTube.com slash DJ Dominic K. Of course, you can contact me. Uh, more information, booking info, etc. cetera. DJ Dominic K at gmail.com. Of course, you can also advertise your product, service, or event with On Fire TV. Sponsorship can include on-air mentions, social media posts, digital commercials with links to your products. Uh, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, visit onfire-tv.com uh, for more info on that. Also, this Saturday, you heard we're going to be at the All White Affair. That is going to be a lot of fun. That's an annual event, so I'm looking forward to that. And Kamala Harris drew her largest crowd yet at the Atlanta rally that she had uh, yesterday. The presumptive Democratic presidential nominee said that her path to the White House runs through Georgia. That is that that might be true. Uh, that that is uh, is definitely a uh, a major spot for Democrats. So she drew her largest crowd as the party's nominee during a energetic, a boisterous rally in Atlanta, where she contrasted her. Uh, prosecutorial background with Donald Trump's criminal record. And, uh, you know, she, she, uh, she had enthusiasm on full display. Many folks online are talking about the fact that my girl, Megan the stallion was there. Uh, have you seen some of the, uh, doom and gloom and some of the folks that perform at Trump's rallies? Yes. Different type of energy. Thousands packed. Uh, a downtown arena for a only in Atlanta mix of uh, fiery political stump speeches and high energy hip hop. It was uh, it was something to get the young people involved, something to get a a demographic that was not excited about Joe Biden, not excited about Joe Biden. And Kamala has come and just breathed new energy into uh, this Democratic Party. The convention is a few weeks away. Uh, She issued a debate challenge. Of course, Trump is scared and shook. Why is Donald Trump scared to debate Kamala Harris? Uh, I say that he's going to debate her. He wants to push it off. And after the debacle today, the way he disrespected the journalists, the way he talked about Kamala Harris, uh, he, he thinks she passed her law test, uh, talking about the bar exam. Uh, maybe she did, maybe she didn't. Uh, you know she passed the test. Man, she took it twice. It's a difficult test. Difficult test. Donald Trump can't pass the bar. Donald Trump has his grades, his high school grades, his college grades locked down. He doesn't want anybody to see him. If his grades were really good, believe me, an egomaniac like him would be happy to show him. But they're locked down because they are piss poor. That's why he doesn't want anybody to see him. That is exactly why. So the rally that she had in Georgia was a good rally. And, and and a lot of folks, like I said, are online, us, talking crazy about it, being ghetto, uh, this or that. Uh, but this was her first major campaign event since she's been the presumptive Democratic nominee. Uh, the vibes are improving. She is delivering good speeches. It's just been 10 days 
since President Biden withdrew from the race. Ten days. So in Georgia, she had that first bona fide campaign event since she took control of the ticket. It was like a homecoming rally. Stacey Abrams, John um, Ossoff, Senator Warnock, of course, Meg Thee Stallion had, you know, did her thing. Quavo, the Migos, introduced the vice president. There was a lot. There, there was a lot going on. There, there were a lot of decisions made that Joe Biden would not have made. And that's fine. This is Kamala Harris's thing right now. When, when lose or draw, that, that's what it is. She's owning it. And I think that that is good. Now, I've lived in Atlanta for many years. And for all the excitement, for all the energy, and there's an endless supply of it in Atlanta. Some of the attendees are still reeling from the political whiplash of the last few weeks. A few weeks ago, Biden was the candidate and everybody was <laughs> depressed, sad, down on their luck. After that debate performance. And he tried to bounce back, couldn't work, didn't work. Tried this, tried that, catches COVID. Decides to turn it over to the next generation. And now it is on and popping. Young people are engaged. Young people have a candidate that they feel they can relate to, a younger candidate. Kamala Harris, for her part, is not shying away from her history as a prosecutor as a district attorney as an attorney general on stage in atlanta she led with what has become her signature line in those roles i took on perpetrators of all kinds predators who abused women fraudsters who ripped off customers cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain so hear me when i say i know donald trump's type Yep, that's what she's saying. She has improved tremendously in the three and a half to four years since she ran for president initially uh, and then, you know, dropping out. Biden, with Kamala Harris's help, won Georgia in 2020. But it is an even heavier lift four years later. Much heavier lift. She launched her own campaign in Atlanta, the Harris campaign, sending a clear signal. They intend to compete everywhere, including in states that seemed two weeks ago to be slipping out of their hands. Expect the Kamala Harris train, they say the brat train to come through. According to the campaign, more than 7,500 folks have signed up to volunteer in Georgia in the last week alone. In a call with reporters ahead of the launch, a Georgia state director for Harris's campaign reported that they've hired more than 170 staffers across 24 offices around the state of Georgia. The largest in-state operation of a Democratic uh, presidential campaign, she said, ever. When she touched down in Atlanta on Tuesday afternoon, it was the sixth time President Harris has traveled to Georgia this year and her 15th trip since taking office in 2020. She said, she said that she is very clear that the path to the White House runs through the state of Georgia. So expect to see a lot more from VP Harris. What's going on, Frankie? A lot more from VP Harris. I'm excited about what she's doing. I think that Biden had a 50-50 chance. After that debate performance, maybe went down to 45. But Kamala is looking real good in this race against Trump. Things have changed. Things have changed. Is Trump going to debate Kamala? I say yes. I say yes. 
But understand this. He is scared. Okay. He, he, he is scared. Kamala Harris released a statement saying that she will be attending the September 10th debate that Donald Trump previously agreed to and is now backpedaling on. Kamala said that she will be there on September the 10th. We will see if Trump shows. He ain't going to show. I think they're going to debate, but I think it's going to be after September the 10th. Now, at this point in time, she will already be the nominee. It's going to be after the Democratic convention. He should show up. He should show up, but we'll see. I I don't see how he gets through this entire election without the debate, though. I don't see how. There are a lot of differences between these two. Donald Trump, of course, light on the issues. Light on the issues. On tax cuts. Trump says that you are all people that have a lot of money. I know 20 of you and you're rich as hell. We're going to give you tax cuts. This is what he told donors. We're going to give you tax cuts. That's what he said to the the donors. No surprise there, right? VP Harris said that there's no reason why Billionaires should be paying a lower federal tax rate than a teacher, a sanitation worker, or a nurse. Many people that I see online, rappers, ironically, I, I've been talking to this Trump supporter, very adamant Trump supporter. And she said that, you know, you're going to be voting for Kamala Harris, da, 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 da. And I said, well, you're going to be voting for Trump. And then she reminded me, while she's this Trump supporter, she can't even vote. Many Trump supporters that are online talking greasy are not registered to vote, don't plan on voting, never voted, but they just like to talk on social media. Keep on talking. Trump supporters who can't actually vote. Keep on talking. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com is where you go. We're going to be at the All White Affair, DJ Terry T Productions, uh, coming from Maryland Live on Saturday. Definitely subscribe on YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K. Very uh, easy to do that. A free way that you can support what we do here. Contact me for any booking info. DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. You can advertise your product, service, or event with On Fire Dash TV. Sponsorship can include on-air mentions, digital commercials, social media posts, a lot of stuff. Hit me up and we can uh, definitely make that happen. Also, links to your products. Uh, I'm going to be back here tomorrow, of course, like I said, on YouTube, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com you can also support uh the diamond k show and on fire tv via paypal.me slash radio on fire on cash app you want to send a donation it is dollar sign the diamond k show you can become a member today on fire dash tv.com slash join uh to do that and uh yeah we got a lot of things going on this weekend it's, it's going to be a lot a lot of things going on this weekend. Uh, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, definitely uh, let me know your thoughts. Because, I mean, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of things going on, right? There's it, a lot of things going on. And, of course, we want to talk about all of those things. So I'll be back here tomorrow. Uh, definitely thanks for listening and watching. See you guys tomorrow. Who's running this club? The Diamond King. Diamond King. Diamond King. Who's running this club? The Diamond King. Diamond King. Diamond King. Diamond King. Diamond King. Diamond King. Diamond King.